Segregation in Blackburn is increasing. We're here to stay, there's no point in running. They live in their areas and we live in our areas. Isolation, segregation, division. Never the twain shall meet. We've been here for generations. This is our country. All we want is our country back. Fear of the unknown is probably our, our biggest element. OK, why are you here? You need to move away from this, like, Stone Age mentality. We have a divided country. 20, 30 years, something's going to happen. It'll take over, eventually. I think Blackburn will eventually become a completely Muslim Asian town. Should I stay or should I go? Blackburn, Lancashire. A town with an identity crisis. There are many ethnic groups here, but according to the latest census, the two biggest are around 100,000 white British people and roughly 40,000 Asians or British Asians, many of whom are Muslim. The question is, how well do they get along? Ten years ago, Panorama made a programme in Blackburn posing that very question. We met two minicab drivers, Mohamed Nawaz, whose taxi firm was staffed by all Asian drivers, and Ian Goodliffe, whose fellow cabbies were all white. This end is predominantly white, and at the other end of town, it's predominantly Asian. Mohammed had a similar story to tell. We're living two different lives here, aren't we? We're just going to grow apart, and it's going to get worse. A decade on, Panorama has returned to see if that's the case. Ian now works as a delivery driver and still knows the town like the back of his hand. He showed us where he felt the town was divided. These are the sort of areas that, that, that you're talking about, about the integration getting less. When white people move out, you can be more or less sure that an Asian is going to move in. Mohammed Nawaz still works as a local minicab driver. I think the Muslim community has, has grown that much now. The majority of areas are Asian. We're here to stay, we're not going to go anywhere, so, you know, there's no point in running. Ten years ago, we filmed a religious parade in the mainly Muslim Asian area, Wally Range. It's the anniversary of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad, but not everyone's cheering. Some whites here feel they're being taken over. Morning. Morning. What do you think of it all? Rubbish. Rubbish? Rubbish. Why do you say that? There is a lot of friggin' rubbish. Fast forward to today. The parade is significantly larger. Over a 10-year period, in this area, the white British population dropped by half. As a whole, Blackburn has a majority white British population, but over 10 years, their numbers fell by 10%. Ian Goodliffe's pub, The Beehive, is on the outskirts of Mill Hill, an area which is almost exclusively white. So, do the locals still fear a growing Muslim Asian population? I, I don't particularly have any fear whatsoever of, of the community, but um, a lot of people do. <laughs> We're going to have a Muslim MP before we're very long. They'll take over eventually. They have their way of life, we have our way of life. We're laid back about it, they are not. And they're taking our culture bit by bit. There are 13,000 Asians in Blackburn. Most of them come from villages in northwest India and Pakistan. They were encouraged to come here by the British government in the late 50s and early 60s to work in the textile industry. 
Gradually, ghettos are growing up in the poorer parts of town. Since their arrival, racial tensions have been exploited by far-right parties like the National Front. Do you want this country to become occupied by a load of khaki-coloured multiracial bastards? Far-right provocation was blamed for some of the violence that engulfed northern towns surrounding Blackburn in 2001, the worst race riots for a generation. Weeks of simmering racial tensions finally erupted last night as more than 500 Asian youths fought pitch battles with riot police. Professor Ted Cantle was the government advisor who wrote the report into the riots. We spoke to him 10 years ago. Certainly, the separation between communities was a factor in those riots. There was no trust, no understanding between the different communities. So has the problem of divided communities got better or worse since then? Segregation in Blackburn is increasing in residential terms, in school terms, uh, probably in social terms as well. I think it has to be seen as a warning for all towns and cities in the UK. I think Blackburn feel that the focus shouldn't always be on them, and actually they are right, because the statistics show that there are many other towns and cities where polarisation of populations is increasing. In just a decade, there was almost a four-fold increase in the number of areas with a non-white majority. So why have communities become so much more separated? Ten years ago, Jaffa Hussein was a student at Blackburn College. He told us that walking through the Muslim Asian area with a white female friend was met with hostility. He was determined to change attitudes and set up a youth group to bring people from both communities together. So what percentage of young people in Blackburn would you say actually mix outside of school or college in a percentage? Like 10%. So 10%. So what's your views on kind of having a relationship with someone who's not the same culture as you? What would your parents think? My mum would be <clears throat> more lenient with me, but then I feel like another part of my family would just be more, you shouldn't do that, you should stick to your own culture, your own religion. It's better, it fits into the family more. It's just the everybody's still the same, that you need to move away from this, like, Stone Age mentality. So if you were, Kira, if you were to bring home a Asian boyfriend? Probably wouldn't go down too well. OK, <laughs> that fear of the unknown can only be broken down once you start to get to know people. Underneath the surface, we're very, very similar. We're facing the same poverty levels, we're facing the same deprivation levels, we're facing the same employment issues, and so we really need to get past this fear of the unknown. Ten years ago, Gulistan Khan attempted to confront this fear head-on by deliberately moving his young family from Wally Range to a predominantly white part of Blackburn. Yeah, yes, I, do. I do know how it goes, you know, Shadi. He introduced himself to his neighbours but didn't feel welcome. I find that they'd walk past me without even acknowledging that you were there. So I, I don't know, I find that a little odd. With the, uh, Since then, community. many of Gulistan's white neighbours have moved out of the area. And over the last decade, he believes that attitudes towards British Muslims have changed dramatically. Arrested on suspicion of terror offences. We're live in Blackburn this morning where... All are described as Asian. It has a huge impact on the, on the Muslims. But we're having to apologise for others. At 6.40 this morning, the police arrested a 25-year-old man and began searching this property in Blackburn's Wally Range. We've been here for generations in this country. This is our country. So why do we have to justify every time somebody calls out Allahu Akbar? One of the most contentious government policies amongst Britain's Muslim community has been PREVENT, part of the UK counter-terror strategy. 
It was designed to identify potential homegrown terrorists. Until he retired, Commander Dal Babu was the highest ranking Muslim officer at the Metropolitan Police. People have called it a toxic brand. Uh, if you put toxic brand into Google, the first thing that comes up is a government's prevent strategy. Uh, it used to be Donald Trump. So, so something has gone very, very wrong. Gulistan says that members of his community resent being under suspicion. If you're under the microscope and Home Office sees you as the culprits, it's not a good idea. But Home Office could really do more in terms of education and asking directly at ground level what the problem is. How can they help? I've called for some time now to have an independent review of Prevent, but there just seems to be an absolute resistance to that from, from successive governments. Gulistan believes that the negative portrayal of Muslims by the media has had a significant impact on shaping attitudes towards his community. They're portraying Islam or Muslims as a bunch of terrorists. In 2011, the far-right English Defence League staged one of its biggest ever protests. 2,000 people marched through Blackburn town centre. I became involved with EDL because in 2005, I was in charge of the Emergency Response Unit London Underground. We assisted the SO13s, which are the anti-terror squad, on removing uh, bodies from the trapped train. In the wake of the 7-7 attacks, Martin Sculfer joined the organisation which went on to become the EDL. He's now a North West Regional Organiser. I've cleaned up after Islam and I question why did they do it in the first place? We've got a serious problem in this country. We asked Martin Sculfer to respond to accusations that the EDL is a racist organisation. I find it quite insulting, actually, to be called a racist. We oppose the radical side of Islam, the ideology of Islam, which is not racist. At the end of the day, they don't integrate, and they certainly do not like us because we do not worship Islam. The way we've homogenised Muslim communities has been a bit of a disaster, really. They're all somehow lumped together in the press and media eyes, in the eyes of the prevent agenda, and we've done very little to actually promote the views uh, of people who, uh, who disagree with that uh, position. Nadia! Nadia Hussain winning the Bake Off competition probably has done more for Muslim-British relations than 10 years of government policy. In 2015, Dame Louise Casey was asked by the government to write a review into integration policy. We are living with the consequences of not managing migration and immigration effectively. We've done a bit of it, but we haven't been on it to the degree that we need to do so. And I think we have a divided country. The Casey Review highlighted that over 10 years, the population of the UK rose by 4.1 million. More than half of that, the result of immigration. The report was published more than a year ago. Chukka Amuna is the head of the all-party parliamentary group on social integration. He's concerned that Louise Casey's report has been ignored. It's definitely been put on the shelf in the too difficult, too hot to handle um, box. But the longer we park this, the more dangerous the atmosphere and environment will become. More than a year later, Louise Casey still hasn't had a response from the government. I am disappointed, which is why I think it's really good that Panorama is raising these issues again. They're not only around Blackburn. These are national issues that we ought to be able to talk about.
Over the last decade, the issue that Blackburn's white British community has found hardest to talk about is the very visible social and demographic change taking place here. As non-drinking Muslims have moved into new areas of Blackburn, one after another, local pubs have closed down altogether. Well, it used to be the Dog Inn, uh, a pub. Um, I think you actually did a piece on it the, at the last time, didn't you? What it is now, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. It's, it's some, some sort of Islamic centre, but I don't know what, what it is. Any house in this area goes up for sale, it will, it's 100% that it'll be an Asian that buys it. Mary, who lives opposite the former pub, now an Islamic community centre, is selling up after 28 years. No, it's just we're moving out and just wondered if there was something was eventually going to happen. And Where are you moving from? We're here. Who's buying it? Uh, well, a lovely couple are buying it. Dare I ask? Well, we haven't exchanged contracts, so that's all. They're ethnic, ethnicity. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, they are, but it's... They're Asian. It's, it's, yeah. It's a state of this that just gets us going. English isn't a common language, unfortunately. We have really lovely neighbours. But, yeah, I feel like we feel very, very uncomfortable. I think we've stuck it out as long as we could do. I think Blackburn will eventually become virtually a completely uh, Muslim Asian town. And the thing is, it seems to have been, like, it's been quite rapid. And I think that's what, I think, frightens you a little bit. They would say, I'm living in a country that doesn't feel like mine anymore. Well, in some areas of that country, that's true. You know, I wrote in my report, the pace and scale of immigration has possibly been too much. The Home Office were not happy with that language being used in my report, but I stuck with it because it's true. Some parts of the country have felt the effects of immigration more than others. It's been more, more or less a total close down in the Asian areas of pubs. Why is that? Because Asians don't drink. The nightclubs are shut and uh, a lot of the pubs are shut. There's nothing going on. It's become, uh, you know, like the specials said, a ghost town. Over on Wally Range, in the heart of the Muslim Asian area, business is booming. Arif Master opened his traditional spiced tea shop three months ago. It's mainly busy in the evening. Um, probably from now till when we close at 11 o'clock at night, um, you'll find that we'll be getting uh, loads of people come in. For Asians, it's what you'd say, well, um, a night out in the pub, basically. Coming here is equivalent to that. Whilst we were filming outside the tea shop, Nazir Musa, a former Lancashire police officer whose family are from India, came over to speak to us. For a local Muslim, he has his own take on what's going on around here. The mosques, the madrasas, the Islamic schools should be regulated. There's a lot that's going on in there which is breeding extremism and nobody's even picking that up. He's concerned that Blackburn's Muslim Asian community is becoming more insular and not making enough effort to integrate. In terms of integration and harmony in the Western world, in England today, we should be integrated a lot more. And I see little children, you know, young girls, five, six years old, going to these Islamic schools, which I disagree with, you know, they're covered up. What's that all about? There are currently almost two million children from different religions being educated at state-funded faith schools in England and an unknown number at unregistered faith schools. Experts fear they are a big obstacle to integration. 
I think the segregation of schools is uh, the most difficult problem we face. Ironically, it's probably about the easiest to fix uh, because the reason we have segregated schools is because of public policy. When faith schools were first established, they were allowed to determine their own admissions policy. In 2010, that changed. The government decided that no new faith school could have more than 50% of its intake from any one faith. The problem is that we have thousands of existing faith schools who are not adopting that policy and are ignoring the spirit of the legislation entirely. Ten years ago, Gulistan Khan sent his children to the local school to give them an opportunity to mix. Good boys. If the government isn't mixing them at an early stage, how can you expect people to then mix when they grow up? I remember when I was at school, we used to be ferried from one end to the other to go to school. Why can't that be done now? Why can't the government mix them on a proportional basis in schools? A school trip to meet strangers. But these children aren't off on a journey to France or to Germany. They're going to meet each other. In the original programme, Panorama filmed with Anjum Anwar. She led a groundbreaking initiative to bring local school children together. And then I'm going to come to you and find out how much you know about Bethany. The funding for Anjum's position ended. Just take a seat. And today she teaches English to new immigrants and helps them learn how to integrate into British society. But everybody feels that we should be living together. Yeah. Do you have a question, madam? What do you mean, British value? Oh, Six million dollar question. Mm -hmm. Even the prime minister has not been able to tell us what that means. British values are four concepts. Democracy, rule of law, individual liberty and tolerance of other faiths. Do you have a question? Uh, do I no need to eat dress and particular why to tell people I respect British values. Do I need to dress in a particular way? No. British values does not mean that you have to forget your identity. They feel that uh, you can only be British if you give up being who you are. That's not the case. But they need to feel I can live in United Kingdom, I can wear my headscarf or my veil, I can eat my chicken curries, and I can still live peacefully. One of the most divisive cultural issues affecting integration has been the wearing of the niqab, or full face veil. Thinking about the times you drove in my car. One of our local cabbies says he's noticed a dramatic increase over the last decade. I think there's been a, a like a 60% increase. So, yeah. You know, if they want to wear a veil, yeah, good for them. I have yet to meet any single woman or girl who said to me, I wear it because I'm actually forced to do it. What's the question, Ghazala? Why do many people don't like us Muslim? Interesting. Many of Anjum's students wear the veil and have experienced hostility from local people. Now I feel very bad because uh, they uh, uh, speak very bad words to us. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, that's why I want to ask you how to respect all the Muslims. Thank you. That's really upset you, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get your hanky. It creates a separateness between you and them. They want to feel comfortable within themselves. Is that really so wrong? Is it? It's terribly wrong. People dress head to foot in black and we can't see their faces is just difficult for us as a culture. There's no way around it. And when that's happening at significant volume, we're uncomfortable with it. You know, if a man walked in here in a balaclava, I'd be uncomfortable with it. Muslim women wearing the headscarf or veil are often a target for abuse. Last year, there were nearly 63,000 reported race hate crimes in England and Wales. And in Lancashire, during the same period, which included the Brexit referendum, reported race hate crime went up by a third. There was a spike in hate crime incidents in the wake of that referendum. 
And that is something we cannot ignore and we have to deal with. I think this is a national crisis because we are going through a period of profound economic change. And history teaches us that when society is disrupted through change, particularly economic change and financial crises, there is a big danger that the extremes on all sides step into the vacuum to sow the seeds of mistrust and hatred. And we are at that point right now. If lack of integration is a national crisis, what's to be done about it? Sunday morning at Blackburn Playing Fields, an all-white team is playing an all-Asian one. For children and parents alike, it's one of the few opportunities they have to interact. Come on, yellow, keep going! I just think it's important for them to be able to appreciate other cultures, other communities, and uh, not be um, not be afraid of the other, which is how we get perceived often. Oh, oh, I think it's an excellent thing. I think that they should be mixing all the time. Because the kids that end up there, they don't know no different from anything else. You know, they, they should be mixing. There have been more bridge building activities between communities, more attempts at socialisation, playing sport together. Unfortunately, nowhere near enough. So we do have to, in my view, reset the relationship with Muslim communities. Uh, and there seems to be little attempt to, to tackle that issue. The government declined to be interviewed for this programme. They told Panorama that their new integration strategy will be published shortly. Both Blackburn's MP and the leader of the council also declined to take part. In a statement, the council said, Blackburn is a town on the up. Our diversity is a big strength for us. We fully acknowledge that there is segregation of communities in terms of where people live. Building links between communities continues to be a priority. Ten years on from when they were first filmed by Panorama, Ian and Mohammed, our two cabbies, meet up on the bridge that links their communities. Oh, hello. <laughs> you OK? Yes, yes. So what do you think? Uh, has anything changed in your side or...? No, not at all. Not at all. Nothing? It's... No, no. As you say, we're integrating even less than we were before. Do you know why that is? Well, there's only one reason, isn't there? Racist. Racism. There's a big divide. There is. We don't socialise together, do we? See what happens. Yeah. Next ten years. That's right, yeah. Might, might be coming back in ten years, eh? Yeah. To do another one. <laughs> if I'm still around. <laughs> yeah. OK, then. Yeah. Take care. Thanks Love it. to see you. you. OK, bye-bye. Pioneering surgery over on BBC Two now, following clinical trials with surgeons at the edge of life. Here next, though, a murder which has both the FBI and the embassy wanting answers. Meanwhile, things are looking up for Nikki in Silent Witness.